You know, I sort of like McLean's magazine. It's not owned by Sun Media, but I, I, I find it somewhat contrarian, somewhat interesting. And last week they even had a four-page spread on yours truly. But they had a really weird article about how China is going to save the world as China suffers record air pollution. It is also emerging as the world's leading clean energy <laughs> investor. I read this and I had to laugh. China, where 20 out of the 30 most polluted cities in the world are located, according to the World Bank. China, where the air is so thick you can't even see a building half a kilometer away. They had to cancel an air show because you couldn't even see the airplanes. Unbelievable how McLean's got it wrong. Joining me now from Washington, D.C., our good friend, the boss of ClimateDepot.com, Mark Morano. Mark, you know what? I know what McLean's is doing. They want to, they want the, the dream. They want the ideal that, yeah, China's filthy, but actually, no, 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 they've got, they're building more solar panels than we are. It's all just a, a fake bubble, isn't it? Yes, here's what's going on. Not just McLean's, but uh, Tom Friedman, the New York Times, has lauded China's eco policies by praising, are you ready for this, Ezra? One party rule. Oh. He said that one party rule essentially doesn't have the messiness of gridlock and they can do what's ne uh, necessary to move a society forward. So the intellectual environmental left is enamored with China. This is a picture of China, right? Now, we're showing on the screen. You know, uh, there yeah. is a quarter of the smog in Los Angeles actually came across the Pacific from China. That is how filthy life is in China. And yet they're the environmental savior. Only the UN and the media party could come up with something so cockamamie as that. Give me some stats about China's clean tech in industry that these pictures well, would belie. The wind industry alone in China lost $1.6 billion, reports are. The solar industry, now the, the stock values have declined 87% since 2011. This is, can you say, nosedive? But what's happened is they're a recipient of nearly half of the UN uh, Global Climate, uh, the Offset Program, the UN cl uh, Climate Mechanism. And what it is, and, and, and accurately, people are saying that China is doing no more when it comes to renewable energy than cashing in on the carbon offset bubble and the fact that China is considered a developing nation. That's why they love trying to pursue global climate treaties because they're exempt from the regulations. You, you they're know, the ones benefiting from the redistribution of this wealth. Meanwhile, their emissions are going to nearly, they're going to be double of the United States emissions within the next couple of years. That's how shocking. They're almost, uh, I think it's almost 40% of the global or almost 30% of the global emissions. They are a carbon powerhouse of energy, and yet they're getting credit from the from the left greenies as being some sort of model citizen. It makes no sense. You know what, Mark? I wrote a book uh, almost 10 years ago called Fight Kyoto, and I actually read the treaty, which I bet you 99% of journalists have not done. If you cannot re reduce your own carbon emissions, Kyoto says you can give money in credits to countries like China, or you can do what's called in, yeah. in clean development, give money to China or Russia to develop clean stuff like solar panels, like windows. You just sort of shovel the money, and they don't have to work. They don't have to make economic sense. Yeah. It's just a way for first world countries to buy themselves uh, you know, a moral indulgence. Mark, I, I was in China about six years ago. I drove in the western province of Xinjiang through these huge wind farms. The windmills were not turning. They were all broken. But someone got paid a lot of money to put them up, didn't they? Yes, and it's even more sinister. Many of these windmills either have not, are not connected to any grid and may never have been connected to a grid. These are essentially for show. It's China collecting a lot of money, building them, littering the countryside with these windmills so it looks impressive, and you realize they're not even turning. They had an article two weeks ago talking about them, ghost towns, where the only thing living in these towns are the windmills, and they hear the creaking of them. I mean, this is the, the model... Of, uh, of our future if we follow the UN climate path and what the environmentalists have us going on. Pouring money down the rat hole where China's in charge. Meanwhile, they're expanding all this carbon-based energy. They don't have any even sensible controls on pollution. And they're essentially where we were in the Industrial Revolution. You know, American cities went through similar stuff, not as bad, where cities like Pittsburgh were completely in smog from all the pollution. China needs to clean up its act in many ways, but there's really no incentive when they can continue uh, to, 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 to keep their economic growth at the same time receive all this money, uh, billions of dollars based on offset programs set up by the UN, based on all these uh, countries trying to satisfy their moral indulgences. So we have a situation where China gets to be coddled as some kind of virtuous nation 
when in reality, uh, they're essentially fleecing the Western world. And you got to give them some amount of credit because they're very smart, intelligent, and they know how to con us, and they're doing a good job. At some point, you got you to credit the con man for being so clever. You know, we only have 30 seconds left. I want to refer to a chart we had up just one second ago to show despite right. all this talk about green tech, China is still enormously dependent on coal fired power. Nuclear is going to show some growth. So is natural gas. You see in the middle there wind, solar, biomass. It barely even registers. And that's just a projection of it's growing. I don't believe it's growing yes. at all. Mark, thanks for shining no, for, a light. Uh, globally, sure. Globally, it's only 3%, so called renewable energy. So all the talk, people always say, oh, well, it's doubling and tripling. Well, if you double a size, if you double a penny, you only have two cents. Yeah. And all this is hype. Not to discredit potential technologies, particularly in solar down the road, but you can't buy your way there now, which is what they're trying to claim we can do. Mark Moran of Thanks for joining us as you do every week. Hey, folks.